It is a debate that has been going on for more than a century and which continues today. I got interested in the Grand Canyon when I went to school and uh, started studying and I heard about the different ideas associated with the Grand Canyon and was just blown away when I found out we did not understand how the Grand Canyon formed. Something as iconic as the Grand Canyon wasn't understood, just seemed crazy to me. And so basically decided to dedicate a large portion of my life to trying to figure it out. One theory is that several ancient rivers merged and their combined cutting power started digging out the canyon. Another assumes that the river cut down into the plateau as the land uplifted around it. But John Douglas has his own theory, one that has gained respect among many leading geologists since he first published his ideas in 2000. What Douglas calls his spillover theory seems to work well on paper. Spillover is incredibly easy. All it means is the Colorado River uh, poured into a basin. When it poured into that basin, it had to form a lake. And this lake was huge. All that lake had to do was rise and then spill across the plateau. It poured down, cutting rapidly, and over time, you would have ended up with the beginnings of Grand Canyon very quickly. At his college campus in Phoenix, Douglas is building a scale model experiment to see if his spillover theory actually works in real life. He sculpts tons of dirt into a model of the Colorado Plateau. Running faucets represent the flow of the Colorado River into the ancient lake. Now we have our large lake. The water's getting higher. It's getting ready to spill across. We have a tiny little trickle of water pouring down off the lake. That little tiny trickle of water doesn't seem like much. But over time, that little bit of water flowing down that steep slope is going to gain energy. It's going to start cutting, making waterfalls that work their way back. One waterfall has now reached the lake. You can see that we have just released a significant amount of water, much more water than was previously pouring down. Now we have huge canyon cutting. Landslides are sloughing off the side of the canyon walls, the water flushing it downstream. The lake, you can see that it's starting to shrink in size. That lake is getting lower. And right there, you can see that we have cut our own small scale version of the Grand Canyon. Douglas's experiment proves that the spillover theory works in miniature but he needs evidence to show that it could have happened on an infinitely bigger scale. Douglas sets out in search of a lake, large enough and old enough to be the source of his spillover flood. He has a prime suspect in mind. This is the site of the ancient Lake Bidahochi, 100 miles to the east of the Grand Canyon. And a clue here on the old lake bed reveals how deep this lake once was. These green clays, which indicate deep lake water, this is the classic evidence for the giant lake necessary for the overflow explanation of Grand Canyon. These green deposits are only created in one specific environment. To have green lake clays, you need deeper water where there is little oxidation I think that's indication that the Colorado River has arrived in this basin, that it's made its way from the Rocky Mountains to this location. And this is its basically stopover point before it eventually spills across to form the Grand Canyon. Establishing the depth at this point lets Douglas work out how large an area was once covered by water. He compares the depth of the water with the contour height lines of the surrounding countryside. And that shows that Lake Bidahochi once spread over 20,000 square miles and contained more than 3,000 cubic miles of water. That makes it bigger than Lake Michigan.